so um, I came here two more than two weeks ago and uh, it's been lovely stay <laughs> experience different weather all four weathers which we don't get in India I experienced within one day so um, that's the state of my mind right now when I'm going to give you a talk that it is warm and nice because when I came it was 44 degrees where I came from and here when I landed it was 4 degrees so it was a difference of 40 degrees which I've been managing in the last two weeks wonderful weeks um, I did my uh, undergraduate studies in Barod in Goa and uh, specialized in painting, studio practice, and then printmaking in a master's program in printmaking from Baroda. Uh, after that, which was in 2010, and after that, I have been freelancing and uh, working, uh, and uh, then also teaching uh, at the Technology U University. Uh, in, for last three years. Yes, I will. So, I have been teaching for last three years in uh, a technology institute in Hyderabad where I uh, take uh, classes in art and aesthetics for undergraduate students. Um, for last three years, of course, um, and also managed to practice my own work. So I thought that I would uh, begin by showing you the piece that uh, I did here for a garden book. Uh, the name of the show uh, as they titled was Retreats and Scopes. So much of it was imagined uh, because I had never b visited this place and I came to know from Anya, she discussed with me that it's a, it's a museum and before becoming a museum, it was a it was a castle where uh, also widows stayed. So uh, some of the things uh, I took at as inspiration, and also uh, tried to relate it with my own experiences of uh, any ca any uh, experience with uh, widows if I've had or what um, if you. Uh, as I got to thinking, I also realized that if we forget the color, creed, or race, or borders, then what womanhood could be? So, uh, the, the piece uh, has... The piece has uh, woodcut prints, and uh, an installation, and a sound piece. So all were, uh, all were made for this particular show on which I've, I had been, she discussed last September with me uh, about this and uh, then um, I wasn't really working on it but a certain impression was made on me about this. But it was only beginning of this year since I had been spending time in creating this piece. Uh, most of the work that that I'm about to show you was made in India and then I brought it here with me. The installation was done uh, here with some of the elements from uh, uh, from the garden of the Gardenberg and uh, things like that. That it's a uh, it's it's titled uh, remembrance and uh, it has it's an installation with jute powder pigments paper plants and twigs and uh, woodcut uh, prints and it also has an audio piece of duration 7 minutes and 42 seconds nearly 8 minutes so uh, i will play the piece uh, and then we we can uh, see the images along with it because that is how it is designed also so i just hope this is the first time i'm presenting it like that so i hope it uh, it uh, it works in the way uh, it it must so <laughs> bit of experiment also here <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
this right inside picture. And it's the same sound piece which runs in the room with the uh, where it is audible. And here one has to use the headphones in order to uh, see, in order to hear. I work uh, mainly uh, along the lines of uh, migration and identity because um, my family were, came to India uh, after there was a separation partition between uh, India and Pakistan. So we were originally li used to live in Afghanistan and Pakistan area. But then we moved to India with my uh, family and I'm, I was, I'm the second generation born in India. So um, uh, e even though uh, our cultures are related and uh, we have a lot in common between Pakistan and India, but you always struggle with, uh, because we don't have uh, any land that we can say that I am from here in any part of India. It always uh, moves out that uh, if you are from the west of India then you are you can say you have the language, you have the uh, maybe a piece of land that belongs to you or your family. You have possessions like objects which probably were handed down uh, generation after generation but uh, for, for me there was nothing of that sort. So um, these were the uh, issues that I started to uh, explore in my works and the work which uh, Anya had exhibited or chosen in for her uh, show is called Re-embodiment. It is a, a video which is, a, it, it is a performance which I did and out of that performance uh, was the whole series developed. It's uh, photographs, woodcuts and video projection. So what you see in the video is not there in the work because woodcuts are um, made uh, from the video and the video plays a very small uh, uh, segment. It's not a uh, entire performance which it which it plays. So here, even with the um, different material, different medium, it's like uh, how one. It's the same uh, thought running through all, but how each medium uh, exerts its own identity. So you have a video next to woodcut. So what is what is the relation in which they are brought together? and they are they are having the same thought but at the same time with the woodcuts you have photographs so both somewhere uh, try to negotiate their boundaries so this i relate with uh, that having been migrated uh, even one has to um, negotiate with uh, the boundaries that one has left and the boundaries that are further created where one lives
it does not have a sound. Um, digging would be like um, trying to unearth what what my past is where do my ancestors come from or what are the uh, histories that I am part of but uh, the point comes that how much does one dig one has to cover it to move on to take the next step to move to uh, figure out one for things and life for oneself uh, in that relation also exploring uh, identities with respect to gender and uh, more uh, there's a small video this was part of uh, uh, a Chitrangada is a, a short uh, story written by Rabindranath Tagore which explored uh, gender issues uh, and it was written around 100 years ago uh, trying to understand uh, where there is a woman who is uh, who chooses for some time she's very uh, uh, a strong woman who could uh, horse ride and uh, play in the battles and win that but she fell falls in love with this guy and uh, for him she goes in front of him but she's not beautiful in the way that we imagine women or the uh, the uh, world imagines that a woman a single way of imagining women to be beautiful so she takes a boon uh, from boon, gods give her a boon and give her a beauty as she wants for about one year and in that one year she spends that year with his the, with this guy who she had liked uh, but then she was she always was conflicting within herself because she is not able to be what she wants to be or what she is but has to play and act out a role of being this uh, beautiful damsel who has come from the heavens and uh, with this guy but in the end when uh, when she's about when the one year is about to be completed she confesses to this guy about reality about the truth and then uh, 
this this guy responds in a wonderful uh, way and he says uh, uh, that's it that's what i had been wanting in all, in all this time i never got that from you so i kind of knew that you were not yourself so uh, it was the 150th birth anniversary of rabindranath tagore and uh, we we found the text to be relevant even now after 100 years of he having conceived it in our circumstances so uh, this was a workshop done and this uh, work came uh, during that time this is um my interpretation of uh, of uh, the uh, text and i have used uh, certain symbols which i thought that maybe i'll explain once we've seen it
um, nature becomes a very integral part of my work uh, because within India we have so many different landscapes and areas. Uh, I have lived in the most beautiful of uh, coastal areas and also lived in deserts uh, where you would you would have 48 50, nearly 48 49 degrees of uh, temperature in the summer so uh, that as a material and also because when you leave everything you don't have uh, any material to call what is your own then what remains it's the elements around you so I also get uh, influences uh, from Indian philosophies so here the two triangles in Indian philosophy we have a Shaiva tradition which speaks of uh, two uh, triangles this for a female a triangle pointing upwards and point a triangle pointing downwards it's for a male uh, so just those triangles were representing male female and energy and we call them Shiva and Shakti Shakti is the energy which is embodied in human beings so uh, that was my interpretation of the work and uh, for one of the works um, I worked with uh, a traditional family we have practice of using cow dung as a material to make toys uh, so I worked with this uh, um, uh, unfortunately now there are hardly any uh, families remaining whose family tradition uh, who continue to make these figurines out of cow dung uh, you would uh, have only four of them in the eastern part of my country and uh, I went there I went there and uh, worked with them uh, the the trouble is that we are uh, in India it's we are trying to uh, make peace with the modern uh, and the tradition so to say uh, we have we buy a new computer or we buy a new car and we still do the little ritual of uh, garlanding it and breaking a coconut in front of it to ward off the evil or to bring positive energies so uh, in and living in midst of this um, I've I found this material uh, of cow dung because all I needed was a cow uh, its dung and sun uh, and uh, then a project came where uh, one of the curators she was working on uh, on the theme of water so uh, this uh, particular installation I did uh, as uh, as an interpretation of it these all are na natural uh, materials paper is rice paper the tiles beneath them it's a traditional house where this uh, installation was done so the tiles are uh, terracotta tiles uh, and uh, these objects are made of cow dung only pigment is a uh, powdered synthetic pigment because I couldn't uh, I haven't learned how to make natural pigments yet and I couldn't locate anywhere uh, where I could uh, get the natural pigments so these figurines are uh, mother goddess figurines because I, I found that uh, world over across cultures not only cow dung was a popular medium in the primitive times but also time and again the image of mother goddess and related to nature has been evoked uh, you, you find it in Latin America you have Europe where Venus of Willendorf was found uh, you have um, in uh, Asia in uh, in Chinese and Japanese traditions uh, and Indian traditions uh, you red Indians in uh, the native Indians in America and the Native Americans they also have a mother goddess uh, a form of mother goddess so and it's related to fertility so when I was interpreting this work to relate with water, I I got uh, Mother Goddess that if she if 
she was to see come out take a body form and come and visit our earth what would be her expression so that's when i was reminded of edward munch's scream mm-hmm. so um what i did was i just made her face like scream so these are my hands <laughs> yes <laughs> so and uh, when i uh, when i discovered this material discovered would be a very long shot but it has existed and i and when i went to the family they were very surprised that how could a girl wearing jeans and t-shirts come from city to learn such a material because their own family in their own family the children don't want to learn it because mm-hmm. now they have that it's it's poop nobody wants to work with dung mm-hmm. but uh, we use a uh, cow dung uh, as a manure as a fertilizer in garden and mm-hmm. in uh, fields we also uh, we have had uh, traditions of not only us even africa has had traditions of making houses with uh, cow-, cow dung flooring and uh, ceilings so um i thought that uh, so what i started to do was to give workshops to approach schools where i can just come for a day and maybe for a couple of hours if they can find the time and work with children to tell them that what they don't have to have fancy gadgets or uh, big fancy crayons or pencils in order to make art very basic material like this so so far i have worked with around 3 schools uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, most of the time it is the adults who don't want to work and children are ever ready to get their ha- hands messy so uh, i think i connect so much more with them uh, and they make wonderful objects uh, we have had uh, uh, electronic gadgets made in cow dung so if you were to see from a, a postmodern view <laughs> you would <laughs> can put that into that account uh, so, so it's the color is dry and you wash it no oh, it's fresh <laughs> so uh, very close to the color yes so i'm lucky in that way because if when i moved to hyderabad i started working in this institute where i also teach so um, they have a we have a small organ organic farm uh, which is in the curriculum of these uh, students they must at least for one semester take up some agriculture work mm-hmm. and work in the garden in the in the farm so uh, they we have a cow we have two cows now and we are growing larger <laughs> so sometimes in the morning i would have to wait for the cow to <laughs> and yes initially you have the hesitation because but after once you worked and get your hands messed and seen what you can what are the possibilities then it it no longer matters mm-hmm. and it's very good for hands is it so german cows are very smell well also because now it's been 3 years since i'm working with uh, this material it's only been 3 years since i'm working with this material and uh, yes it depends on what they eat that's what i wanted to say because my father used to do a um, really nice sculpture of cow dung in kerala uh huh and he tried to bring that to the us and people said it was beautiful work and how he took the material was made up 
Yes. <laughs> they want happy, but you know the cow will cook what it, what it eats, like us. If we eat meat, we smell special. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> So uh, uh, in the in the farm, it's because it's a it's a residential campus. So it is also funny because we have only two cows, and they it 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 is it requires a lot of infrastructure to give them the natural food. So what happens is the fruits and the salad remains are given to the cows. So but then I explored with other farms and uh, used the dung from them. And I realized a very stark difference because they were giving uh, grass to the cows. So when you when the cow eats grass, its uh, dung's texture is very good, <laughs> and it binds well, and it also looks very good. The color that it gets afterwards, it's a it's dark. Um, uh, uh, um, I know oil pigments, Van Dyke brown, and uh, mm, it's a nice, uh, nice brown. <laughs> Wait, you see that on the picture? There were some really dark ones there. Yeah, it's a bit of like sienna, uh, sienna and umber together. Here? Um, no. Oh. Here? No, this yeah, is just yeah, photo yeah, effect. That one. Oh, this, these darks are edited work, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to burn one of them uh, and it, it became a very nice dark uh, uh, black, uh, but uh, uh, I, it, 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 uh, it, the shape of it got a bit destroyed, so I thought that I'll just edit it. <laughs> but it is this dark, this is... Uh, a good one. It is yeah. like that. So really it depends on, uh, when I have to tell my students also, I tell them that it depends on what you have fed the cow, how your sculptures will turn. And all that you mix with the uh, cow dung is um, just mud. So what I do is we use uh, ant hills mud because it's anti-termite, termite hill and uh, it has a, a, a glue in it which acts as a very good binder. Mm -hmm. So all materials are just growing around me and India has plenty of sun, so no worries. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good, great factor, so. Uh, uh, as one of the, uh, uh, I, uh, I was in, invited to create an installation piece for literary festival at a heritage site. Now it is a heritage site because in Hyderabad you had Nawabs come in, Persian rulers. Mm -hmm. So um, they created, a, and it is now turned into a school. So I was participating in a literary festival and the site is a school. So um, mm -hmm. I'll show you what I did. <laughs> and along with this I also give, give workshops. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is where there were, I saw a great contrast between adults and children responding uh, to the material. So uh, in India, every state speaks a different language. And not only speaks a different language, the script in which the languages is also different. So uh, if I am to go from north to south, Within South, if I have four or five states, all states speak different languages. And uh, English now is one language which binds us because if you have a Malayali and if you have a, a Tamil or uh, anybody from anywhere else speak, they will use English to speak and not their native tongue or not Hindi, which is the national language because there is certain kind of resistance which is understood, but there is resistance. So English becomes... So when I was in the school, in Indian education now we, are, we stress a lot of uh, importance on technological studies because everybody wants to become an engineer and go abroad, join Facebook or Google in IT or, uh, or uh, other manufacturing companies. Uh, aeronautics is new hot thing in India now. So, um, and it is really sad because in education system itself, we stop teaching arts and uh, literature and if you are a literature student you always looked at what is there to do in literature so um, 
what I thought that would be uh, how I related with the site was that I made letters uh, of different scripts, languages of mm. India in cow dung. Uh, and uh, this, so what is hanging behind in the, uh, as uh, columns, yeah, they are each different letters. They are not ordered. I have just randomly put them because I didn't want to give an impression uh, that it is it means something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are just letters uh, intermingling because intermingling is another thing which is necessarily required. So, so it's different languages intermingling as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, d different scripts. Mm -hmm. So how you would have a written a uh, the sound of a uh, written in Tamil letter, Malayalam letter, or a Hindi letter, or a, Guj a Gujarati letter, or a uh, Bengali letter. So, uh, they are all in one, all the, the... They are somewhere nearby. I didn't make it so constructed. Mm -hmm. They are somewhere nearby. So then a, uh, then burr sound, and certain typical letters. So what I found was, O was the most common thing, <laughs> which all scripts had. Yeah. So uh, by making it was a good excess. Urdu also I've included uh, because uh, Urdu is not taught uh, in all the schools, but uh, people can take it if they want mm -hmm. to take it. Mm -hmm. So. But you move the languages up. You don't speak every language. I don't speak. I oh, can't speak. Yeah. Twenty-eight languages. Eight hundred fifty dialects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now at least with this work um, I can identify which one is what <laughs> because otherwise it's, it's even funny. difficult for a North Indian to recognize South Indian because everything looks curvy uh, and uh, well. so um, it was divided in these three parts Curvy. 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 Yeah. So you have a lot of rounds in uh, South Indian uh, letters and uh, they will not have a bar on top. Hindi has typical way of having a bar on top. So Bengali is very squarish most of the time. So at least now <laughs> could do that. And that's a sculpture in the center made of terracotta. Uh, and below are, is a wheat grass, is a wheat seed. Mm -hmm. And I have English letters also here in this. Uh, the, the thought behind this work was that it's okay that we are moving towards all technology based stuff and uh, but we should not forget where we are coming from. Absolutely. So uh, I thought that, and most, I imagine common public also from different walks of life, but largely it was because it was a site of the school, mm -hmm. I thought that uh, those, mm -hmm. those were the motivations. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of the work is Swabhav. Swabhav in Hindi means uh, nature of self so i was having a play with the words also yeah. because swa means self and bhav means expression but together when they come it's so bhav is nature of the self <laughs> so uh, and also nature when i translate it in english it becomes nature environment mm -hmm. so mm, a lot of literary thing happening there. Mm. Except for wire, which is aluminium wire, everything else is taken from nature. Mm -hmm. I have jute strings, I have cow dung, bamboo mm -hmm. sticks, mm -hmm. and uh, terracotta, which is again made of mud, mm -hmm. and plants. And this figure on the right is naturally baked. Uh, naturally baked means a uh, we set up a small kiln uh, with, again, dry cow dung cakes <laughs> and uh, hay 
and uh, mesh so that and it it took six hours to bake the sculpture and then sculpture when I put it in there to bake it it was not decided whether it's going to come out as it is or not also so it has it but it baked very nicely more than I had imagined it got a natural dark hair color with white uh, with silver it burnt a little more so it got a nice silver so it became as a old uh, age was or <laughs> wisdom was oh. reflected and it holds a, a seed mm -hmm. and because I had visited the site, uh, I knew that uh, what was the movement of the sun. So uh, it, we had wonderful net-like effect on the, just visually we had net-like effect and it moved from morning till evening it would uh, cast, so shadow, net would move from here to here because I had made like a triangle here, a corner. So when the sun moved, First, this side would have the net. By the evening, this side would have the net. So it was visually very interesting. Like this. And because it was it it was my first time I was doing something in public, mm. so I was. Uh, uh, and in India now what we are having is right-wing politics mm -hmm. so uh, right-wing is uh, asserting Indianness uh, by uh, making it uh, more uh, uh, by taking a lot from Hinduism mm -hmm. which is uh, <laughs> not nice so uh, I had a lot of uh, Muslim brothers who came and spoke to me that why are you using cow dung because cow, cow is banned to eat by the way in India because mm -hmm. it's a holy uh, animal mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. although we can mis mistreat it <laughs> but uh, yeah, so a lot of Muslim people came and spoke to me that why are you using cow dung mm -hmm. thank God uh, our right wing politics they have a flag and it's orange color mm -hmm. so the only good thing was I was not wearing orange clothes <laughs> put in that bracket but um, they spoke to me and uh, when I spoke to them about what my intentions were then they seem to have calmed down because <laughs> otherwise everything they are uh, having relating it with that everything is being uh, uh, Hinduized you know so but using is not Hindu you would because it comes from your uh, our holy Cow. Yeah. So you would think that uh, are you celebrating the holiness of the cow yeah. and using this as a material? But then when I spoke to them, they said yes. Uh, my grandma used to do this, and uh, so it really becomes a medium that uh, just crosses these yes mm -hmm. these boundaries. And in and uh, while this was on, I also gave workshop, so uh, students could or anybody who made, they could make something and take l alphabets and letters, whatever they liked. So, but by the end, uh, I had letters were of course gone. Even the plants were gone. They all wanted to take it home. <laughs> so uh, I had a. Uh, um, uh, and the bamboo sticks went back to wherever they were taken from mm -hmm. they can be reused so the only thing that with me is now is the earthen pot which I used as a pedestal and the sculpture rest all is with people and and I, if they remain I can just discard them and they will mix with the earth so there is very little uh, how would I say uh, leftovers yes waste, waste. Uh, mm -hmm. which, <laughs> Except for photographs, so. <laughs> no, but I have the sculpture with me. So, yes, they. So it's like that. It's yeah, it's this big. 
It's a wonderful picture. Do we have time? Um, so this, uh, of course, that's the last work that I'm going to show you. Uh, this was, uh, it was made at the time. So you see, I've not gone chronologically. I've just picked as I pleased. <laughs> uh, this was done in 2011 and that is just a year after I finished my master's, my studies and I was living alone in the city and you can imagine India, India to live alone and it's a, these are big cities with a lot of people and we, we are still battling a lot of problem against women and things like that. Mm. So uh, um, I rented out an apartment for myself and there I had these uh, old women who lived and uh, it was this work is basically an interaction uh, out of uh, living with them and they taking care of me and they were wonderful um, what happened was that they used to ask many questions that oh you're an artist what is that you do uh, what kind of works do you produce and just <coughs> general curiosity and interactions so uh, I thought that what is one common thing that is there between them and me given that they lived they have lived a different time except that they were migrants from Goa <laughs> so they long long ago had migrated from they were Christian women mm -hmm. they migrated from Goa to Gujarat Baroda and I was a migrant from somewhere else to Goa so except for this connection there was very little because we even don't share the same religion our practices are very different but I've, what I found was something uh, uh, very interesting was that during Christmas time they put uh, when they are setting up the crib they would put uh, wheat seeds in, in uh, mud and uh, they would set up the crib mm -hmm. and around that wheat grass will grow till the 6th of Jan and uh, what we do uh, to pray for uh, Indian goddess uh, uh, Durga uh, we have a time for nine days where we uh, we do the same thing but we are Hindus and they are Christians mm -hmm. so I thought that there is something more that binds us maybe we are not aware so materially another thing that binded us was that I used to wake up late in the morning and my milkman used to come and put the bag on top uh, on the floor so they were worried they used to pick it up and keep it in their kitchens and I could collect from them later so when I had this invitation to work for this show uh, I worked with the materials which were common with them and me and uh, just built up this piece based on uh, because I was living alone, so I was experiencing a little bit of uh, mm. uh, things. How to not only live alone, but also because my mother would freak out if I'm late half an hour. And she would say, no, be indoors by if the sun is down. And they are extra worried. So I was just figuring out that what does it mean to be a lady, a female and live alone. Mm -hmm. So this piece was brought out of all these uh, things so what I did was that the bag the milk that was one common thing between us I collected with them those milk bags and uh, mm, planted the wheat seed mm -hmm. and on the day of the exhibition I gave these bags to people who would visit us so uh, what happens here is that spaces are encountering because they are grown somewhere by different people mm -hmm. then they come to the very fancy exhibition hall with your air conditioning and uh, wonderful and then on the exhibition day you have people coming to see art so who are these people who are coming to see art mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so I gave a bag to them and you would. So uh, what would happen was their own nature would come out because uh, most of them dressed very fancily wouldn't want to carry a bag around. <laughs> so they'd say, no, can I take it later? And of course, <laughs> I didn't tell them what to do. Uh, they could take it, they could throw it, they could keep it, uh, whatever they wanted to do. Um, and most of them did not take it because they have manicured hands and how to carry a bag. And I did not, there was no way. I wanted it to be carried it just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and what is there is that in Indian uh, tradition, we have 108 names for female God. So what we have done here on this bag is embroidered 108 women who I knew intimately. Either intimately means either I know them personally or maybe my grandmother or mother has told me some stories about these women. Something more than uh, I should know and I know. So we embroidered those names. So some women I did not know their names and they would be addressed as Bubbly ki ma. Bubbly ki ma means bubbly is a child and bubbly is mother. Mm -hmm. So many women, they, they, their names are not known. You are known either as somebody's wife or somebody's sister or somebody's mother. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, and this I heard every day because this lady used to slay or stay on the same floor as me. So I don't never knew anything more because she would leave early to work. She'd come back late. Only I heard her children cry and somebody scream, Bubbly ki ma, baharao, come out and take care of your child. So. so this is the documentation of how those bags were made. Thank you. <laughs>